Hi, this is David Voss, CCIE 11372, and in this video you're going to learn about designing firewalls. Specifically, you're going to learn about virtual firewalls, and then active-active firewalls, private VLANs, and then zone-based firewalls. So let's go ahead and begin with virtual firewalls. Firewalls can be deployed in multiple modes, including routed and transparent and most of them can be virtualized into security contexts that provide cost-effective solutions. The virtual firewall is a security context and it is a way to partition a physical firewall into multiple, multiple logical devices, each with its own configuration. This is similar to having multiple standalone firewalls, but without having to buy separate devices. When defining security contexts on a device, the old configuration will be saved in the appropriate file, and the new virtual firewalls will each have dedicated configuration files. Security contexts are distinct and independent firewalls in the sense of having their own attributes, such as security policies, assigned interfaces, NAT rules, ACLs, and administrators. Each virtual firewall has a system configuration that can be modified through the administrator context, which is created automatically when converting from single mode to multi multiple mode. The administrator context is just like any other virtual firewall, with the exception that it is one used to access the system and configure it. Next, let's talk about active-active failover firewalls. The active-active failover mechanism used on firewall devices leverages the virtual context feature. The best results are obtained when the two devices configured with active-active failover have an identical platform and operating system. The two firewalls must be connected with a failover state link. This can be accomplished in three ways. A single physical link, where both the failover and stateful information are transmitted on this link. Dual physical links, the failover information is exchanged on one interface and the stateful information is exchanged on another. Dual redundant physical links, these act as a single logical link that carries both the failover and stateful information between the firewalls. Although the two devices are identical, either firewall modules or ASA devices, the security context feature will be leveraged. Next, let's talk about private VLANs. PVLANs can be an option for adding extra security in the Enterprise Campus module or in the data center submodule, especially in the e-commerce submodule. A PVLAN is a way to take a VLAN and then divide it into more logical components, which allows groups of servers or individual servers to be isolated, quarantine them from other devices. To build a good trust model between servers and the DMZ, consider separating the servers so that if one of the servers is compromised, it will not affect the other ones. PVLANs function by creating a secondary VLAN within a primary VLAN. The secondary VLANs can be defined based on the way the associated port is defined on the switch. Such as community VLANs, they communicate with devices in the same community and with promiscuous ports on the primary VLANs. And then isolated VLANs, they communicate only with promiscuous ports on the primary VLANs. Next, let's talk about zone-based firewalls. A zone-based firewall policy is an iOS feature that can leverage the existing ISR routers by configuring firewall functionalities on them, as opposed to using dedicated ASA devices or firewall modules. Cisco's zone-based firewall functionality was introduced in Cisco iOS version 12.4.6 as an evolution from traditional firewall implementation, which was an interface-based model. The limitations imposed by the traditional firewall implementation led to the, to the development of zone-based firewalls, which work by following these steps. Create security zones. Place an interface or multiple interface into each security zone. Create unidirectional zone pairs to define relationships between zones. And then apply a modular, flexible, granular policy using class maps, policy maps, and a service policy to the zone pairs. After defining the zones and assigning interfaces, unidirectional zone pairs can be created to enforce policies for traffic passing 
through the three defined zones. After the zone pairs are defined, different policies can be applied to them. And once the modular policies have been created and the zone pair relationships have been defined, other interfaces are placed into that zone and the policy applies to it automatically. Using zone-based firewalls no longer requires having just one ACL per interface, per direction, per protocol to provide security policies. Zone-based firewalls provide major advantages because they use a modular configuration structure, including modularity, flexibility, and granularity.